Hello and welcome to another episode of MRCOG Mastery in 10 questions. This video is on cervical cerclage. Cervical cerclage can be used to try to prevent a mid trimester loss or preterm birth. But who should be offered cerclage? And who should not be offered cerclage? What are the different ways of doing it? What are the potential complications? Let's answer these questions and more. Let's start with the basics. How does cerclage work? It helps to maintain the structure and the length of the cervix. But that's not the only mechanism. It also helps to maintain the endocervical mucus plug, which is really important to prevent ascending infection. Let's move on to the second question. Who should be offered a cervical cerclage? In other words, what are the indications for it? It is an invasive procedure and it isn't without risks. So you need to make sure that the likely benefits outweigh the potential harm of cervical cerclage before you offer it to a patient. Now there are three indications for cervical cerclage. The first is history indicated cerclage, clinical history indicated cerclage. So this is for women who have had three or more previous preterm births and now they have a singleton pregnancy on board. The second indication is called ultrasound indicated cerclage. So this is for women with one or more previous mid-trimester loss or preterm birth, and now they have a short cervix on ultrasound scan. A short cervix is defined as a cervical length of less than 25 millimeters. The third indication is emergency cerclage. So this is for symptomatic women who present with a premature cervical dilatation, often with exposed fetal membranes. It is an emergency procedure. Okay, we have looked at the indications, but what are the contraindications for cervical cerclage? That's question three. The contraindications include active preterm labor, clinical evidence of chorioamnionitis, ongoing vaginal bleeding, preterm prelabor rupture of membranes, evidence of fetal compromise, lethal fetal defect, and of course fetal death. These are all contraindications for cervical cerclage. Now here is an interesting question. Question number four, what should you do if you incidentally identify a short cervix on the ultrasound scan? In other words, there is no history of mid-trimester loss or preterm birth, and there are no risk factors for preterm birth, but an ultrasound scan shows a cervical length of less than 25 millimeters. The answer is don't offer cervical cerclage. There is no evidence that this does any good. Question five. Here is another interesting question. Should you offer cervical cerclage if you notice funneling on ultrasound scan? That is, there is dilatation of the internal os, but without shortening of the cervical length. The answer is no, you shouldn't offer it if this is an isolated funneling that you are seeing. Question six, should we offer cervical cerclage to women with uterine anomalies? The thinking here is that we know that uterine anomalies are associated with mid-trimester loss or preterm birth. So should you offer cervical cerclage? The answer is that no, you shouldn't because there is no evidence that this is of benefit. Okay, let's move on to question seven. What groups of women require ultrasound surveillance of cervical length? Obviously, these are women who are at risk of either mid-trimester loss or preterm birth. And such women include those who've had previous preterm birth or a mid-trimester loss, particularly between 16 to 34 weeks, 
those who've had previous preterm pre-labor rupture of membranes, P-PROM, again under 34 weeks, those who've had a previous cerclage, those with uterine anomalies, those with intrauterine adhesions, those with a history of trachelectomy, and those with deep or multiple loop excessions in the past. All these women could benefit from cervical length assessment in pregnancy. Question 8. What is a typical regimen for ultrasound surveillance of cervical length? Ultrasound screening is done every two to four weeks, typically starting at around 16 weeks and finishing at around 24 weeks. Question 9. What type of cerclage should we offer? The default is transcervical cerclage inserted as a planned procedure between 11 to 14 weeks of gestation. The idea is to place the cervical cerclage as high on the cervix as possible. Some surgeons would mobilize the bladder while others won't. And it's fine either way as long as you place the suture as high as you can in the cervix. McDonald's suture does not require bladder mobilization. Schrodker suture, on the other hand, requires you to mobilize the bladder up. If, however, previous transcervical cerclage didn't work, then you should offer transabdominal cerclage which may be performed through a laparotomy or through laparoscopy. Transabdominal cerclage can be performed preconception or in early pregnancy. Question 10. What should you do if a woman with cervical cerclage has a miscarriage or stillbirth? Often the decision making is complex and it is really important to have an MDT discussion so that you can get the right decision-making input. There are really three options. With earlier gestations, say up to 18 weeks of gestation, dilatation and evacuation may be possible, and that is an option. The second option is to cut the suture, often through a posterior colpotomy, to aid with the delivery. The third option is a hysterotomy or cesarean section. Okay, so that's 10 questions. But if you are still with me, you definitely deserve a bonus. So let me give you two more questions. What are the possible complications of cervical cerclage? Cervical trauma, membrane rupture during insertion of the suture, Bleeding is always a possibility intraoperatively. Bladder damage and anesthetic complications are all possibilities. Final question, question 12. When should you remove cervical cerclage? If it's transvaginal, you would remove it between 36 weeks and one day and 37 weeks of gestation. Unless, of course, you have planned a cesarean section, in which case you can remove the suture at the time of cesarean section. If the woman gets into established preterm labor, then she will need the removal of the suture. All women with transabdominal suture will need a cesarean section for delivery. And an abdominal suture can be left in place following birth if a future pregnancy is planned. Excellent. So that is the end of 10 questions to MRCOG Mastery. This video is about cervical cerclage. There will be more videos coming of similar nature. Look out for them. And until we meet again in another video, have fun with your revision. Mm -hmm.